Good evening and welcome to Chess on the Brain. So tonight I'm going to analyze Todd's game from Connecticut. Um, he sent me a really interesting game. I think a lot of the game is going to be about the opening. He was asking whether his opponent was cheating. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll look at maybe the computer evaluation at some point and see. I know they have some algorithms that can kind of determine that that the sites use now. But we'll kind of. I think we can have a feel for it. At any rate, um, regardless of whether they were cheating, if they were, you should report them. But at any rate. I think uh, we could learn something in terms of planning, how to approach the English opening with the black pieces. Um, I think I've played this variation once, uh, but usually I try to play it a little bit differently. It's kind of like a botanic system. Let's take a look. And by the way, uh, I have some music in the background. Hopefully the volume worked out well to Hilton Jefferson, uh, also jazz saxophonist, who's also from uh, Connecticut. So, D4, E5. Okay, so we have a reverse Sicilian, essentially. E3. Hmm. And usually if I'm playing a Sicilian, I'll try and get either G3 or Knight C3 in. So this is really a different approach with E3. And I think White wants to get a quick D4 in, or at least have that option available. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, personally, I just, when I play the English, I'd rather have the great snake variation, which I talked about, where you have this and this. Bishop G2, and it's a little, just a little tighter, you know, more of like a solid formation. Because um, whenever you play D4, you got to worry about E4, that bypass, and we'll look into that. It didn't happen in the game, but that would have been interesting. So D5 was played. Um, let's see here. Yeah, let's use the opening book to look at the options here. So what's the main move? The main move is either Knight F6 or D6, but then you're kind of entering standard territory. Um, so I think C5 was interesting. Um, where is that on here? Oh, I think it tra it ends up transposing um, d5. But yeah, it looks like the more standard moves. Yeah. Knight c6 is pretty standard. Um, and what if they play d4, though? I think yeah, d4 should be pretty good for white, though. Because now you might get hit with d5 at some point as well. So uh, I don't know. I think c5 is interesting. Knight f6 is the main move. And then let's say they... Yeah, okay, let's say they go d4 again, but it seems like now it's not quite as good. And these aren't just master games. These are these are all games, uh, I think, in the, in the Lee Chess database that they have available here. Um, but let's see. It looks like the main move is to take. That's the only move that seems to do reasonably well for black, other than knight c6, but only two people played that. Hmm. Somehow I like knight c6. It seems like it's kind of a contrarian move, kind of a different approach. And you're inviting d5, probably not e7 then. And we can we got a win and a loss, it looks like, as it transposes. But you can just bring your knight to g6 or even f5. Um, probably g6. And then try to get your bishop on c5 and play d6. And that could be a really good game. Let's see. Let's see here. Knight c3. And, uh, yep, knight g6. Or d6 drew. But no, I don't like d6. That's I want to be able to get the bishop out. And they go... A3 lost. We have, let's see, oh, Strapunsky. I've heard of Strapunsky. Uh, and then we have Bak Baklanov, who lost. And then, um, I don't know much about the pronunciation, but that's 2375. 20, um, and they won. Let's see. Let's see how they won that. So just so you can have an alternative, I always like to try and give you know, some other way to play if, uh, you know, just, I mean, I think C5 is interesting, but this this is kind of like the, the lower risk option. Actually, Knight C6 is the transposition. So after E3, then E5, and that's how you, that that's why I think there weren't many games played from that position, but there there were there were three games played from this position. Okay. No, more than that. That's weird. Okay. Now there were, now there were three, five, six games. Okay. D5, Knight goes to E7, Knight C3. Knight g6. There we go. Standard development. And I think we want that bishop c5. Even bishop b4. We might do that. a3, stopping bishop b4. A little passive. Now, now. oh, of course, the other idea is that if if you like to get your bishop on c5, it's going to get kicked off immediately. And if you want to go here, you're going to get trapped, right? So basically, you're going to be squashed after this. You're going to have to retreat. If you want to retreat this way, you're losing, right? So um, I think a5. Three, um, and then we get Bishop C five. I, I love Black's position. 
So, I mean, hey, it, 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 this might be an interesting way to play against Dillian. But again, it's um, what was transposed into it, um, into the line that Todd had there. But again, I, I think that E3 is not the most common playing for E3 and D4. It does happen sometimes. It, maybe you could throw them off a little bit in a blitz game or something. Uh, but yeah, the, I think usually in, in an English, you're going to see G3 and Bishop G2 with the standard idea of controlling the light squares, D5, E4 in particular, and just that entire diagonal getting pressure. So this is a little, you know, but hey, it, it's good to know uh, the best way to play against it. And if, and if you play it as white, at least you know this is kind of an annoying response you might want to prepare yourself for. Uh, and then let's see how they won this. They, they strike in the center. They let you come, they say, come at me. But you're wasting time. You're still not castled. And then the knight starts attacking. You got F2 under pressure. Ooh, that looks passive. Why not knight h3? That seems more reasonable. That's passive. And then they just blow up. And yeah, they got three on it. Three defenders against two attackers. No, three attackers. Um, but there are, yeah, three defenders. Okay. So it's fine. It's this one. Takes first. Opening it up. And then just comes back. Seems like White's holding the four, but there's a ton of pressure on D. That's the real problem. And not to mention that Bishop became a real hero on C5 as well. So you got pressure on the light squares, the dark squares. You got solid stronghold in the center. Um, yeah, this is nice. And then that's just going to come under fire. Now you probably want to take back with the with the pawn. Oh, no, if you take back with the pawn, you're inviting intrusions like Rook F2. Very nice. But yeah, it's White's position just doesn't look right because... They kind of were playing a little too ambitious. We had a 22-18 thinking they were going to crush a 23-75, and uh, they were a, a bit too ambitious there. Um, so we took back with the knight. Okay. But now this is – oh, I see. That's falling, but they're hitting this one. Okay. So – oh, but then they just – they're like, I'm just going to take, and I want to get – I thought they were going to take the pawn. Oh, they want to get in here, and you can't even go bishop be three. Stop it. Uh, and then they ended up – is the music still on? Oh, that one's not available. Let's see. Where were we? Let's just start back from the beginning. So, okay. There we go. Oh, where are we? Right there. Okay. And then, this is just kind of interesting to look at. Let's see how they won this. Taking it. And then, well, that's... Oh, and they're hitting this one, and this one's hanging too. That's and if you even once you take, you're gonna have pressure on the E file coming. That's gonna be pretty strong. Might be almost winning for Black here already. Oh, they hit the queen. Queen, maybe queen G5. Where's the queen gonna go? Yeah, simple, modest queen D7. We come over this way or here. And then what's going on now? I mean, that king is just centralized. So when you have a centralized king like that, which is actually what happened in this game that we're gonna analyze. the bishop out okay you attack me now now they did the same thing with where the bishop moves away with an attack okay good move take it and probably rook c8 yeah i'm not i'm, I'm not predicting the moves <laughs> i mean rook c oh they wanted no 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 because they have queen g5 queen g5 so they just went back and said all right i'm guarding this and now i'm threatening rook c8. okay that came okay i was right on that one. <laughs> uh bishop goes back and then now you can even go here and Tuck that bishop in there and, and block any attacks um, on the g7 point. See here. Hitting g2. I mean, it's still tricky. 1, 2, 3, 4. I mean, yeah, white's going to lose the g7 pawn. But black is, again, black is really the, the one with the pressure here. And then, oh, wow. The threat up there was so strong that they felt compelled to play that. There's just... Is there no other way? Oh, in Queen, wait, Queen E1? Well, you can't take here because, the, okay, yeah, you can, you can. Yeah, if Queen E1, you just, you just take here and you, you know, remove the defender from there. Yeah. So there's nothing to do. You just go here and then, wow, swing this way. Now trying to, what are we doing? Trying to win, trying to mate this way. Um, and they just resign. Wow, that's strong. Okay, so there's another way you can handle that position if you want to try that, that opening. Um, but C C5 was played in the game, and it almost becomes like a botanic system. But White is not probably not going to allow that because they're going to try and just hit hit strong with D4. Um, but of course, White can also just develop modestly with Knight C3, 
G3, Bishop G2, and Knight G2, and just get a standard set setup there. You could still get the Great Snake variation, but of course White's going to try to take advantage of the different circumstances and get that break in the center. So after Knight F3, and Knight F6 was correct, that seems like either that or, oh, you know, F5 is interesting. I, I, I noted that. I didn't look into it too much. I think that's the way I played it. Um when I played this once in a tournament. Um, and okay, again, most pressing moves B4. I think you take once and go Bishop B4 or something. Um, you can push it right away. I've, just, I've played this in Blitz games a lot too. It's an aggressive line for black to do. Um, I think you could take, take and push, or you can push right away. Let's look at this. So you take, they take. Um, you, yeah, you have to push. You, know, you don't want to let open up everything. But the, and then I think Bishop B4 is coming. Let's say they go Knight. 95 1 1. So the most common is knight d2 or knight g2. I'll just say knight d2. And then you just develop. Um, what if, and, and anytime they, they play uh, d5, you're just going to come here. Wait, what's going on here? I guess you don't want to take here because you just take this and then your center is, you know, hitting this. Your center is getting dis dissolved there. You don't really want that. Uh, d5 95 would be great. Oh, this has actually been played a lot, interestingly enough. Uh, but black is scoring really well. Look at that. We got uh, three three draw no three games, uh, two draws and a win for black. And this was at like 2,400 level games, 2,300 level, 2,400 level games, um, and black scores well. Oh no, sorry, yeah, two draws and a win. Two draws. Um, 95, and then knight b3 was the best, or the most common. And then huh, d6 was played both times. I guess they want to kind of temper that, that the pawn push there, anticipating that. But this this still seems pretty good too. So D6 is played with a win and a draw. Okay. So just to show you other options. So nine F6. D4. Now you either take first or you play E4. I think taking first is fine. Oh, we have a we have a Carlson uh, MVL game that was drawn. We have an Aronian game that was drawn. Sorry, it seems like a lot of players do this actually at the top level. This was 2017, 2018, recent games. Um, so it takes, takes. Now here I think you might want to push. Interesting. I guess this is kind of a hot line theoretically because you got all these top players. That, well, <laughs> not super recently, but at some point it was hot. Because um, I mean, still these guys are top players now, right? Aronian, Cram, Cramnik, uh, retired, still a top player in his rating. Delphin, Grisha. All these really great players um, that have done this with um, the white pieces. Although there you go, Kasparov went blue black. What did Kasparov do? Let's see what Kasparov did here, just so we can see kind of some some winning ideas. I mean, I, I encourage you to use this uh, opening for. I like chess.com because you can, if you have the membership, you can just do um, uh, you you can just do master games. But after this, after taking e4. Knight g5 and bishop b4. Yeah, I think so. You just want to push and play uh, bishop b4. Well, first of all, he's when he when he does this, they, they got two attackers. So you have one defender, but you've mitigated you, you you know you've mitigated the pressure by by making that you know attacker irrelevant by pinning him. So they push. This was again uh, Galpin. So 2700 against the 2775. This was 96, which was where, when Casper was still active and really strong. Uh, queen b3, a5, and you notice that a5. He's kind of he's getting those, that grip on the dark squares. And this just kind of it makes it really interesting with the pawn on e4. It kind of makes it uncomfortable for white because you got to worry about knight coming into d3 now, and, and you can't go to f3. So. It actually kind of creates this this uh, precondition for a king side attack, and the, the queen side is kind of porous. So you don't really want to castle there so easily. You might have to. That's what he did actually. So they both castled with opposite sides, but the king side just looks. I mean, against Kasparov, you don't want to castle over there, right? When he's got the knights, the pawn in there, the bishop can swing back. This bishop can come can come in there. It's not going to look pretty. So d6. Uh, okay, he, so he sacks the pawn. Let's, but I guess he's just getting the initiative here. And again, this I think he's going to be punished for having king on c1. Because you can get bishop f5 in there. You can get rook to c8. You know, you can have a lot of pressure on his position here. And if he wants to maybe even sack this one, you say, hey, go ahead and take. Well, actually, it wouldn't be a sack so long as you can, you know, as, as, so long as a2 is hanging, you can take that one. 
So, yeah, Kasparov just has a lot of dynamic potential here. And, and with the tempo, of course, you can go knight g3, but then, then you have that open line right there. Um, okay. So, three. And then he just, oh, interesting. I was expecting bishop g6. Oh, it doesn't work because f4. I see that, f4, f5. It's a natural move, but it tactically doesn't work. Gotta watch out for that. f4, knight's gotta move somewhere, and then f5 because the knight's covering. Um, I'm sure he saw that, but uh, but now I imagine he's gonna get pressure on the c file some. Maybe against f2. So, king b1, queen e8. Huh, what does he have in mind here? Maybe he's going for queen g6 at some point? Who's the f1? I don't know. Uh, bishop takes. Oh, so he did do that set. He did do the set, well, temporarily, it looks like. Maybe you could, uh, yeah, you could play bishop a4. But he may end up getting the, the pawn, but Kasparov, again, he's playing for a dynamic potential. Funny enough, I just saw um, Kasparov, I forget the, his opponent's name. It was a nice game against the uh, uh, win over variation of French defense. But, you know, Kasparov was playing white, yeah, against the win over variation. He sacks two pawns also, just for that piece activity. I mean, Kasparov has won so many games with those intuitive pawn sacks and getting that activity. So, you can see it's all Kasparov here. I mean, look at that. Well, he, and he didn't even take the pawn. Um, well, where could he have gone? I mean, oh, he's also giving, he's, he's getting, uh, well, it's tricky. tricky. Looks like he's getting the exchange maybe for a pawn or two, but White's gonna have good compensation. So he didn't, he didn't bother taking this. And also if you take this, he can take this, and then this is falling, this can fall. Um, so he just took it, but he's like, look, you didn't even get this pawn. Uh, your rook's hanging. This is under pressure. So you play b3, but again, like, look at that pressure. Huge initiative. You got, you got a mating net here. Um, knight's just looking in there. It's, it's really a nice position. And then, and then you can imagine b5 cracking it open at, at any time. But I think that pressure on the a file is going to be insurmountable at some point. Not to mention, you can play on this side of the board too. I mean, you got pressure here too. Uh, I imagine it's going to come on the queen side, but let's see. He often plays across the board. So he shifts here, but he's looking this way, but maybe he can come this way too. If he gets to f4, he can stick his bishop on f5, kicking the knight out. Um, takes the e-file, hits the queen. Right there. Queen comes in. Uh, okay, okay. He wants that pawn now. He's like, all right, now I want to take it. Bishop checks. He's interesting. So he has the control of d3, so you can't challenge with bishop b3. And Caspi just wants to get that check. And uh, if you take, he's going to get his queen in there. So he's infiltrating this forest position. And we're at what? A pawn down, right? Three, four, five, six against four, seven. A pawn or two down, depending on whether he gets the B4 pawn. But he has a ton of play here. So he says, okay, go ahead and take my pawn on B4. But I'm going to get to C5. Um, where else is he going? Yeah, he just wants, he just wants an IC5. And now you can already see the tactical possibility of if the queen moves somewhere, you get that you get that check with the pin on the A file. So we already have some tactics in it now. Um, due to all this, this piece pressure, the exposed king. I mean you got the ingredients for tactics, right? You have you have loose pieces, you have um you have an exposed king, and we have active pieces. They have a lot of weaknesses there, uh, on the squares as well. Lots of weak squares. So queen b6. Ooh, now he's going to take advantage of the, of the pin in a different way to threaten the knight a4, working the king and queen. So he has to go back again. So he may as well just stay it on c1. Um, check. Okay, what's going on here? So he's giving up two pieces for the rook, but he's going to get to take on a2. So he's, he's going to be able to infiltrate, infiltrate here. And that's pretty strong. Yeah, you got two pieces for a rook, which is theoretically good. But you can see again, look at that relative king safety. That's what matters here. That king safety is going to really hurt Galpin here. Okay, he wants a fork. I doubt Kasparov really cares too much because he has other things in mind. He sacks it. Nice. So he, first he gave up two pieces for uh, the rook here in order to take a2. And he gives up the exchange here in order to get b3. So it allowed him to get in here to here and then to here. And it's it's dominant. So he's down a piece now. Yeah, he's down a whole piece. But now he's what three, four, five. So everything else is equal, but 
The main difference is the exposed king. Lots of weaknesses, exposed king, and that piece that you got is pinned. Kind of reminds me of like dragon positions too, where you just, I mean, ideally you'd have that bishop, but you can maybe give it up anyway and trade him down, but just you leave him with a bunch of weaknesses on the queen side. Uh, I was like looking at cat. Hey, who doesn't, right? Just looking at some cool cast ball games. Because um, I think I think the opening is really the main part. Because after the opening, I think Todd did get into a bit of trouble. Ooh, okay. And then he's got the fork, and then he and then he wins the end game, I guess, with the extra pawn. Nice technique. Uh, and he's just up a clean, yeah, just up a clean pawn and force is interesting. It's a little tricky though. It's a little tricky. Um, you got four against two here, but two against one. But he calculated correctly, I guess, that he can get over here. Obviously correctly, because it worked out. Um, by the time he gets here, look at the box. This pawn wants to go here, right? It's it's white to move. But this is the box. You make a diagonal here. You have your box. As long as you can step into the box, you're good. Well, you're in the box right now. It's white to move. Whenever he goes here, you're in the box again. right? Whether you go here or here, you're inside that box. So... Then he just starts, you know, pushing. So he's like, okay, your king is not going to go anywhere because you got to deal with this. Okay, you want to go for counterattack? Well, you're going to get, now you got a queen. Okay, so he gives it to him, but he gets there first. And he's going to slow him down even more with the king over, making him, let's see, here. Oh, it's nice. That little inclusion of this allows you to, you know, you force him to go forward, but but you, because um, if you push with the pawn, I guess you'd go here, but you, then it's going to take him two more moves to get to here. At that time, you already got your queen. But the point is, that you're trying not to let him get a queen with a check. So a little inclusion, nice, nice um, finesse there. And then and then you get your queen first, and you've got an extra pawn. And then now, now if we can trade down, which he did, ah, nice. So he probably saw that, probably saw that a, a while back. Okay, cool. That was the Kasparov game. Let's go back. So anyway, let's look at the regular line. Um, so the line of the game takes takes. Uh, I'm not sure about taking though. Again, I like pushing, and, and as you saw, Kasparov just uh, sacked it confidently. But taking, taking didn't do poorly in practice. Actually, it did better in practice. But again, like you have to take it with a grain of salt because only seven games were played versus 241, and we don't know what the strength was. Let's see, what are the strength of those kinds of players who did that? The, yeah, they dropped down significantly. We got well, I don't, yeah, it's weird. This opening book was complicated because. You got one win, it looks like. Two losses and a draw. It looks like it's changing. It says 45% for black, but that's not the case here. Versus Not versus 27% because they got two wins for white. Let's see if it changes. Um, knight takes. Yeah, there's something wrong with the opening book. Um, queen c7. Uh, yeah, you don't, you don't want to go queen. I think that was the critical error here. But as you can see, just think about this positionally. This is an important moment to just analyze this position. So. What's going on? Let's assess it. Who's better here? Uh, we'll look at the pawn structure. So we have one, two, three pawn islands for black versus two for white. See, this is all one pawn island because if you push, you can keep them together. Um, so this is a weak pawn. You can't even really get it to d5 anytime soon. White's got a nice grip. He, he will be able to get a grip here. Um, I guess he tried. One person did just try and get it in. Now he's like, okay, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to get my pawn stuck back there, so I'm just going to try and get it in. But that didn't work out. Um, can successfully do it. It just doesn't feel like it will. Um, development's about even. We both have two knights out. But yeah, there's still those weaknesses on the D file. So I think that's the main advantage White has. And it, let's see, if D5, uh, this was played. Now they're putting immediate pressure here. There was a check, which I don't think is going to work out too well. Um, they try to trade down, and then just castled, and now and now suddenly White has this massive lead development, and they ended up winning that. So, but Queen C7, that's almost losing positionally. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that bad, but the problem is that well now now you know Todd right because you see that once that knight hops in with tempo, hitting the queen with a gain of time, and then you get that bishop f4 coming. So. So just this domination on the, the dark squares, and it also enables uh, knight c7 threats, or one of the pieces getting into d6, it's it's not pleasant. So suddenly, white takes the driver's seat, and, and again, you got um, both the weaknesses plus the uncastled king. Now, you could say, okay, we're both uncastled, but who is that really going to hurt? It's going to hurt the one that's under attack, the one uh, with less development, which is, in, in this case, after knight b5, 
and, and not just development, but, but piece placement. So White's going to have far better placed pieces, um, unfortunately. That's just the reality of it. we got to avoid that. So I think the way to avoid that is to play for the initiative with that E4 push, if you're going to go into this stuff. Or, as I showed you the alternatives earlier, avoid these lines if you can. But the main thing, I, I don't like taking, I think, in terms of structure, because it, immediately it's giving you that weakness. And White is just like, you know, you, you can claim advantage in a sense, a small advantage, but you can claim this sort of, it's, it's sort of at least a, morally, you can just kind of say, hey, I know I have, um, you know, a stronger pawn structure. So it may not show right away, but it's like, a, it's a long-term advantage. It's almost like in terms of risk management. It's like, look at what you could do to my position versus what I could do to your position. So I have very, there's very few things you could do to my position if I have strong pawn structure, right? Um, whereas if you have weak pawn structure, there's just a lot of things that, that, that can be done to you. So I think that's, that's a useful way of looking at it in terms of just mitigating your risk. Um, so chess teaches that. Chess definitely teaches that. You, you about that whole risk, you know, getting a good intuition for that risk reward and knowing that, well, the kinds of things that are going to lead to long term risk, generally speaking, would be obviously king safety. Um, pawn structure, piece placement, you know, having not having precariously placed pieces, things like that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So, that's some orange soda. Let's see here. So, yeah, you just want to avoid, well, you know, we, it looks like, I mean, you have, it seems like you're okay here, though, Todd. I mean, uh, Again, I can't, I, I'm not I'm not going to put too much faith in it, this opening book um, in terms of the percentages because it, it looked kind of weird. But for some reason, oh oh, I'm sorry. Okay, these are these are top games. It looks like those are the top games. That's what's going on. So let's see. But bishop to b4. I got a crying baby in the back. I don't know if it shows up or not. But um, let's see. But, but chess players know how to, uh, you know. Focus no matter what, no matter what noise, you know, no matter what, you gotta be focused on your game. Uh, let's see. So, although yeah, <laughs> you, sometimes you have to know when to when to break that focus. Um, let's see. So, let's see here. Bishop to four. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I think bishop e four would have been a good move. Seems like a similar idea, but without the inclusion of e four. I mean, well, in terms of risk, e four definitely was a little risky. You're going for the you're going for the win. With that e4 idea not with the ghost pawn here but earlier on um but now you, you don't have that but you have weaker pawn structure but i still think black is active you know the interesting thing is that now that you have mitigated um pressure on d5 you can maybe get d5 i would prefer to probably just castle maybe get rookie you're going for rookie eight and then you might throw in d5 get your bishop out there i mean suddenly this game could be easily not only equalized but black can take take over here so as you can see um like knight c2 lost maybe you can take it we had a 2200 who crushed a 25, beat a 2500. Um, that was during my gap year, actually, the gap year for chess in 20, 2006 to 7. Uh, I don't know if I came across uh, Vladimir, Vladimir. I played in the Aeroflot Open one, so maybe maybe he was playing in Russia. Um, castles, that was a good one. That was like trial by fire. It was a good experience. I think I, didn't break. I, think I broke even. It was like in the B section or something. But um, it was a good, really good experience. Uh, so bishop e2, knight e4. I mean, I've seen Fisher do this kind of thing, just just play against those two weak pawns. I mean, even he'll give up his bishop even with Fionchetto to take on c3. Um, but yeah, I mean, people even give up their exchange for this kind of thing, to have those two weak pawns, again, weak pawn structure on the open file, half open file. And uh, after bishop b2, queen b6, and then yeah, it's, black is just really dominating here. <laughs> well, tactically winning, right? Uh, so they just drop the bishop. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, because you're going to take c3. You don't trap your queen. After your castle is done, you just queen, queen win of a piece. And, and you're going to take c3. So they try this. Can we even take with a knight? Yeah, because we, co we cover b1. And then we can take here, and then we can run back. We're up a piece. Um, interesting. So just kind of showing you some how grandmasters and, and masters have approached these positions. Um, but queen c7, um, now you're in trouble, right? Because now, now it's going downhill. So the point is to avoid this before it starts. Avoid the trouble before you get there. Um, uh, and then, yeah, now now you've got the absence of the queen. So so now you've got the knight that hangs out there hitting, hitting especially c7 and d6 right after bishop f4. That's 
going to be real dangerous. And maybe at some point, 9p5, but it's going to be hard. And I mean, hey, we'll give it to uh, the player with the white pieces. And in terms of whether they were cheating, maybe because they played such, okay, well, let's see. I mean, I, all the moves so far are sensible. Like, they just got out of book. This is sensible. And But then, like, rather than taking the castle queen side, which seems like it's probably correct, well, let's check with Stockfish in a second. You defend it. They take. Okay, now they take. Uh, you take. Makes sense. Now, I think, yeah, unfortunately. So this move helped them. That you were, you were getting yourself in trouble on that C7 square because now that first the queen got hit, now the king is going to get and, and the, Well, the problem is the knight comes in with tempo and it guards the rook when it comes in. So you got to try maybe here. I don't know. When I was looking at this at first, I was thinking, well, it, you got into some trouble, but I think you kind of mitigated it. King E7 and... Uh, Maybe c5 would come, but then you're like, you know, maybe you just get your bishop out and challenge, have to challenge the rook and just try to hold on. And it's not over yet. All right, there's still some counter turns. But now, actually, amazing. I mean, this is kind of cool. I'll give it to them. It's a cool option they found. And is it just lost here? a6 was played and c5 is mate, which is always cool if you can do a pawn mate. I mean, hey, you know, we'll give it to them. I think Tall said something about, you know, the best. Was it Tall who said the best day of his life was when they got, like, crushed? It's like, wow, it's so it's a masterpiece. And he was part of the masterpiece. So it's like, you know, the way of looking at it, you know, that that, that you lose. You, you, so someone's got to make a mistake, but you're still part of that masterpiece. And then hopefully the next time you're going to learn from it and, and be on the, the other side of it. But that's the chess career, right? Your chess career, you're going to be on, on both sides of, uh, of those situations where you're going to be the one who's crushed and you will be the crusher. And, and it's chess karma uh, for the joy of chess, you know? Um, <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. But hopefully you get more wins than losses over time. But you got to learn from it. If you get angry about it, good. And fight back. Um, yeah, I think it's lost at that point. E4. Because C5 is coming. You can't. You're petrified there. Wow. Okay, yeah. So I'm pretty sure. I mean, they played perfectly. So I don't know what their rating is. But it seems to me that they didn't make any mistakes. So let's even see here. I mean, of course, this was this was logical. Let's look at here. Let's just quickly see, like, if they... If their moves are corresponding with the computer moves, just to see if they're cheating, and if they were, you should report them, and they should be, you know, you regardless, you're learning from this game. But okay, queen e2 is the correct move. It says takes takes, of course. Uh, king d8 was correct. So maybe you're both cheating now. <laughs> no, so far this was this was all correct for both sides. Bishop f4, and then uh, this bishop c5. I don't know what my battery's about, but just enough time maybe. Oh, let's see here. I think, I think it probably uh, stopped playing, right? Video. Oh, because we hit that. It's blocked in country, just like I don't know. They, they blocked this video in, in the United States, just like a butterfly. Okay, I don't know why they blocked it. Um, let's see. Best. Okay. Uh, there's something about best. Let's see. A couple of songs about best. Um, hopefully that starts up again. So. Castle's queen side. That was was that the correct move? It says rook d1, but they could have been like, oh, that's the secondary move that the computer recommends. And it's, I mean, same difference, right? 0. 0.4, 0. 0.1 difference, 3.5, 3.4. I think that makes total sense. Unless they have a really strong engine, that's stronger than Stockfish, and says that's the best move. But anyway, that's that's uh, pretty good. So 98, and then oh, well, the computer says c5. They played knight takes d6. Uh, still good. They could be like, hey, I'm still up the equivalent of a piece. But c5 looks like it was just crushing. You know, there's no need to take it right away. Just kind of the threat is greater than the execution. Nimzovich. Uh, and then c5 was still possible. So they aren't playing the computer moves here. Their, their advantages diminish significantly. But they might have been like, hey, I'm still winning and I, I don't want to be detected as a cheater. So I'm going to play a secondary or tertiary move. Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, and again, c5 is possible. But they know they're winning. So they're like, I'm winning. And then they get, uh, oh, wait, knight b5. And again, like that wasn't the recommended move. So maybe not, maybe not. But we can't know. You'd have to like maybe see if they've been banned already. <laughs> Go back and look. Maybe they've already been banned from uh, chess.com. So king b6. But then b4 is lost. a5 is the only move. Not a6, a5. Because that gives you king a6. But then you're walking into the, the wrath of the bishop and the knight. Double check, knight c7. Uh, can they even play like b5 or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. b5. That's That's nice. And then let's say like knight, I don't know, knight d8, okay? Is b6 check just winning on the spot? Check. What's going on here? And it's just domination, right? Nothing can move. Petrified. 
Uh, anyway, but they didn't play the exact computer moves at the end. Um, but let's, let's see if they play some computer moves like around here. Like a little bit earlier on. But this was all book though, so it's hard to tell. Um, but takes, takes. I think they played, but they played all the correct moves there as well. So I think so. They played the main lines. Um, and then they, but, but after Queen C7, the game kind of took on a different path. So that's why, again, why I wanted to focus on the opening and just a few different paths you can take there. So if you really want to play aggressively, instead of Knight F6, just stick your pawn on F5. Um, and then, and then, and that's actually going to, that's going to help you. Um, play e4. It's going to be actually a little bit less loose because you're going to have that f5 guardian there. And uh, yeah, I think I think I almost prefer this. d6 is kind of unexpected. Yeah, I think I think bishop e4 is more natural because when I saw that intuitively, I'm like, well, I don't want to block my bishop, you know. And I think the computer doesn't like that either. Yeah, but I think I think bishop e4 makes. Me. Um, so something like this. And interestingly, there's well, there's got to be a game there. Maybe d6 is good. It seems like it's good, but maybe it's not as good as it seems. You just get your king out of the way. But then the knight, knight's going to hit c7, right? Oh, but it's, but it's pinned, so it can't get there anytime soon. So c5 maybe. Now now, now suddenly black is up a point. I mean, yeah. You know, you got a huge center. You got the pin. Uh, only problem is the bishop. But that bishop can be freed easily with b6, which is also going to dismantle that kind of the setup here. Tear it up and bishop b7. In the central control, so yeah, I think I would I would recommend if you're an aggressive player, or even if you're not, just to, to mix it up and, and and you know if you're a really solid player, maybe you should try an aggressive line. So try this uh, F5 idea and see if it works. Uh, let's see if there's any questions. Make sure the stream was green. Uh, hey Jamal, uh, there's Jamal. I just did I just did my last video um, on Jamal's game. So play that out so we can see. Oh, play which out? Not sure about. Which, uh, Jamal, which part are you talking about to play out? Uh, not so sure about being able to concentrate no matter what kind of noise. Oh, is that? Oh, I know what that is, too. It's funny. I didn't even see it. But I know you're, you're talking about because I was at that tournament where I, and I know you um, you wrote it because Jamal is a journalist for USC, U.S. Chess Federation. You're talking about where uh, there was like some practice, music practice in a tournament. Which tournament was that? Was it a, it may have been, no, it wasn't the World Open. It wasn't that big, but it was one of the ones in Crystal City and our, um, which is actually where uh, uh, Amazon is supposed to have its new headquarters, um, the one that didn't, <laughs> the one that didn't reject Amazon. Um, so I think that's what you're talking about, right? Let's see that. They're like like some music practice. They're like much of different different groups going on. There's like an atrium in the middle, um, right? Play to the people and dance and chess collide. I think they were dancing. Yeah, they were dancing and they also had some music there. Uh, I guess my connection is slow right now. So hopefully the stream is not so slow. But uh, yeah, When Dance and Chess Glide by Jamal. And I remember that guy. I think he was the guy who was behind the dance dance group. Um, <laughs> boing, boing. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, some really like zany kind of yeah, boing, boing thing. It, it was cool, though. It, it was, you know, I, I think that it inspired some creativity in that tournament. I think there was a lot of creative play. Well, I think he... Um, uh, uh, Ru Rufeng, Rufeng Lee, I think, did he win? He, he's been on fire. I think he, I think he was an, I remember seeing him as an IM a few years ago and then he became a GM quickly. But I even, I remember seeing a game where he, uh, this was in the Pittsburgh, I think. This was the Pittsburgh Open when he, I was looking at his game from that. And um, yeah, he just had a nice like bishop pair and just, just won, won the end game like, like 40, 50 moves later. Just, just, out, just kept on out playing them. But yeah, that was pretty funny. The, uh, that's a good article. Check it out. That was 2016, October 12, 2016. And yeah, uh, very f fitting for the year. It was a third year in general, so I guess I guess it was fitting. Uh, anything else? Oh yeah, Jamal, you're still there. Let me know about. Um, yeah, let me know about that. Oh, that was back to the box part. The box. Oh, Washington, Washington Chess Congress. Oh, oh, it's called a jaw harp. That was cool. I mean, it inspires creativity, you know. And hey, if you could bring that into your chest, then all the better. Um, I don't know what line you're talking about. They'll play that out so we can see. Are you talking about like the the, the checkmating line? Like, well, the, yeah, in the game itself, it was over pretty quickly after the um, after Todd, 
you know, got himself into a bit of trouble there. So, yeah, again, I think that the, the thing about this game is just avoid avoid the problems. And that, that's where it shows. I mean, well, the thing is, this is an op- a, fre- uh, a really sharp line. It's a very sharp line by White when they try and get the D4. And so it's like, well, this sharpens it even more if you're going to play F5. But, again, it's uh, – I mean, unless White plays this all the time and they really know the book really well and they've done, done some preparation. But I think it's kind of offbeat a little bit. I mean, how many games are on here? There's like 100-something, barely over 100 that have been played here. Actually, you have a, a Geary game that was – oh, that was a draw. Big surprise. Um, a Grisha game that was won. Okay, I'm, right, I'm about to – battery's about to die. Let's just quickly look at. I'm, I'm curious about the Grisha game, See, just because it's uh it, it, it's a really interesting line that you can employ here um, with the black pieces, and uh, so so again, I mean, if you're going to be ambitious here, you you probably want to try d4, especially with knight three. Again, you could do the g3 bishop g2, but I would do that with the knight g2 setup when the bishop's open, not when you have knight on f3. You can go knight to d2 later or something, but um yeah, just just be if you're going to do this. Just go for it. And that scored the best. So you go D4 uh, if you're playing with white. And then uh, I think, I think yeah, it looks like, I think you take first. You take once. Might transpose. And then you play E4. Oh, wait, wait. But we were trying. Wait, wasn't I on a different? I was trying to look at this uh, Grisha game. Where'd it go? Okay. So let's look at the Grisha game. Maybe that was the Grisha game. I don't know. I thought, Okay, so so they did uh, d3, knight f6. They did play d3, uh, but maybe that's why Grisha could beat uh, Ding here. So yeah, I mean, this is totally comfortable for Black here. You're just getting uh, you're just getting a big center. Yeah, you have one weakness on d5, but the knight just came in and gave itself up. My, my computer is like about to die or something. Freezing up. Anyway, uh, oh wow, he he really went all out. Well, was this like a blitz game or something? But he was he was going for the kill. He went G5 right away. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, it stopped. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll just end it there. Look up that game between Ding and Grishuk. Um, oh, Paige is unresponsive. Okay, I don't know. Maybe I too much screen power. Okay, we'll, we'll cut it there then.